Oh, there's recording now. Lovely. Um, so we're very interested in um, being involved for a number of reasons, not least of which is kind of the scientific end of things, um, the communication of scientific findings, as well as kind of fitting everything into this broader theme that we are working on of climate change. So one of the things that we actually had the opportunity to do during the preparatory meeting was submit comments uh, for the public record. We did submit um, a statement that outlined our three basic priorities um, coming out of this conference, uh, coming out of the preparatory meeting into the conference. Um, basically, it was uh, first supporting the need for support to the nations um, in working to utilize ocean resources and uh, maintain them. Second was the need for support for science around oceans and a connection between science and policy. And the third was the explicit engagement on the matter of climate change as it relates to the ocean. So those are kind of the three main things that we as living islands are coming into this June conference as our main themes of focus is, is the support for developing nations, specifically Pacific SIDS, support for science and its connection to policy, and support for dialogue around climate change and the oceans. So going into the June conference, um, pause really quickly. Any questions before we jump ahead here? Comments or otherwise? Kiana, yes, sir? Nope. All sounds great. Okay. Um, so in going into this June conference, um, we have a number of really kind of cool opportunities. Obviously, the biggest one is the opportunities for partnerships and networks. The effort that we are undertaking at the moment, which will be wrapping up by the end of March, is to actually become an ECOSOC partner organization, um, which means we would gain consultative status with uh, the UN and be invited to these kind of meetings. Um, which is a really cool opportunity, offers a lot of benefits in terms of not only our international esteem, but also the availability of connections and kind of everything that goes along with being directly associated with the UN. It also does mean that we get a slightly higher status and priority when it comes to entering into the conversation at meetings like this. So Jesper, Kian, and I are working on that right now. That's upcoming. But the actual opportunity at the conference, obviously, is more of your standard kind of conference opportunity for networking. Um, so obviously, if you mind if I go ahead. I'm so sorry, but if I could interrupt for a, a vocab check here. You said that there was a certain uh, category that it, you would fit into for the UN. Uh, yes. Could you repeat what that name was one more time, please? Yes, that is ECOSOC Consultative Status, E-C-O-S-O-C, -O -O uh, Consultative Status. Basically, it means that we are a non-governmental organization that takes deep interest in the goings-on of the United Nations and have been approved by a standard application to have a seat at the table um, whenever we are able to. So it's a fair, there, I think there's some 4,000 odd organizations that can claim ECOSOC consultative status. Um, it's kind of their standard like stakeholder engagement status for NGOs. Um, but it is much more official, and that's what we're working on right now. Awesome. That also will make it much, 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 much easier for all of us to actually physically go to the conference when the time comes. So, yeah, uh, if I can add something, Jake, really quickly. Yeah. It allows us uh, several things. First of all, default, there's a limit number to how many people you can show up at the conference, and that number is when you have consultative consultant status. The second thing is that uh, if we want to make a statement uh, actually on the podium, or if we have something we want to say, or even if you wanted to actually participate in some of the panels, there's no way that's going to happen if you don't have the status. I don't know if we're going to be in a same position to go there when we're there, but it at least opens up the door of possibilities. Right. So one of the things that we're going to discuss in just a little bit actually is um, the series of generally far more interesting events that take place at these conferences, which are the side events that are nowhere near the Grand Hall where most of the discussion will be taking place um, for the actual resolution and call to action. But um, those are something that we actually could potentially maybe lead. 
So that's another discussion that we'll get to. Um, the just basic... real quick, has, who here has uh, been to a UN conference before? Just show of hands. I have. Who was that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I went to the United Nations Forum of Convention on Climate Change uh, in Montreal back in uh, 2004. Awesome. Uh, yes, side events are definitely the main show. Yeah. Has anyone, um, has, has anyone else been to one of these before? Not to a United Nations. I've been to some big international conferences, but I think United Nations is a separate beat. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you, Alden. That's, yeah. That's good to know. Okay, so um, going into this, and we'll discuss the, the format for those that have not been to one of these just really quick in a moment. Um, when we are entering into the conference, the there are kind of these three goals that we've laid out. One of overall, obviously, trying to promote those three points that we were talking about. One is the partnerships and networks. We are trying to build our international network in order to enable the work and goings on of Living Islands and obviously each of your individual projects as it pertains to you and promoting that. This is a great opportunity for that. Um, there's also something called the Ocean Action Hub, which is specifically for each of you that are working on particular research programs at the moment. Um, I believe there's a link to it below, but basically it was something they were promoting during this preparatory meeting as being a repository of knowledge, projects, and discussions for scientists working on the oceans. So it is a, an opportunity where we as Living Islands have a profile on this Ocean Action Hub, and it is meant to be a place where you can post findings, papers, and get those out. It is, I believe, all open access, so there's, you know, your choices in that realm, but it is a, a great potential forum for sharing knowledge and potentially getting knowledge back. That is something that we'll what, be looking at more. One thing that I've found is those are really useful in scientific conferences because a lot of times people aren't familiar with your projects before you get there, but they all have access to that. So if you're already on there, you know, day one, day two, they can look up those projects and then become familiar and then you got to dinner the next day, et cetera. I think that's a great way to build contacts. I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. The so Ocean we Action Hub. We will, we will definitely have a timeline around trying to get people to have at least some representation on, I think we're going to be using this since it is the one they're promoting, the Ocean Action Hub prior to the conference itself. And we'll, we can have individual discussions around that uh, as, as time goes forward. Um, and then, like I was saying before, uh, the third item is basically promoting the program objectives of Living Islands and basically engaging in those discussions and broadening our network. Um, Kiana or Jesper, are there any other particular objectives that going into this conference you are wanting us to keep in mind? We're promoting the organization and our, our aims, those three primary aims, building partnerships and networks for individual researchers as well as the organization and getting work out and starting the discussion around science on Ocean Action Hub? I don't think there's anything right now, but I think we'll be uh, much wiser when Kiana Bryan comes back from the Marshall Islands because uh, I think it will be important for us to keep a focus on whatever they bring back and say, this is what's going on in the island. This is what's important for the so I think we need to convene and probably table and say, okay, are these still up or is there something that's changed based on what we learned? Also, I would like to add that since Andy will be there, um, Andy's going to work very closely to R&D and to um, the ministers that are very close to the people, the fisheries of the atoll. So it's going to be really important um, Andrew and anybody else who goes out that we keep our conversation really get to know these SDGs really get to know I know SDG number 14 um, if, if you guys are on the um, web part of this and I think it's here correct me if I'm wrong it is here right Jake yeah. um, okay so you'll be able to see all the goals there and um, Living Islands, of course, have a few more goals, um, and some of your projects will fall in between 
or take on two of those SDGs. But our conversation should really, um, when we talk to the ministers and the senators and the stakeholders back home, we should really keep in mind those goals. But Jake, yeah, I, I think you, you really hit the nail and um, what I'm seeing here on the document is perfect. There's nothing else I can include other than um, everybody who does go over, just keep the conversation with in mind these goals. Uh, I my, my apologies, Andy. I didn't mean to leave you out of people going to the islands. No, no worries. Like I'm, I've got my own kind of reference frame, but uh, and so um, I think that it's the data that's going to be collected over the next month period of time. I think will fit really, really well with this. So um, trying to make con different connections with. Um, various agencies, things like that, but get a lot of baseline data on how coastlines are moving, the, the biology that's present, what things look like, and a lot of ways to say this is what it looks like now, but we need to be able to monitor it in the future. So hopefully um, it shows not only what's there now, but gives us a good launching off point to then discuss at the UN, we think this is the current state, like Jesper's saying, but we foresee this might become an issue or things along those lines. So I really like that idea of focusing on, you know, what we may see, but um, in the process over the next month, just getting as much data collected as possible, and then everybody say, okay, this looks like it might fit, this looks like it doesn't, but I've got um, social surveys written, um, various monitoring protocols for a whole wide range of stuff, identification keys, et cetera, to help get the community involved, say if they've like seen this lizard somewhere, that kind of stuff. So um, really interactive type lesson plans and protocols um, for the community. So hopefully in a month period of time, we will have kind of a lot more to be able to present as um, really concrete fact stuff. So one of the things that I'm definitely hearing is that prior to this conference, we will almost certainly have a number of these calls, but I think it'll definitely make sense to, in about a month's time, once you all are back from this trip, to have an immediate follow-up call so that you can present us all of that kind of information in specifics, and we can start to parse through how we want to take this as a team and be able to, as kind of a unified force, present it within the context of this conference. Because I think that's, that's going to be a, a, a force to be reckoned with when we have the, the chance to have that discussion. For now, and you'll have a narrow focus at the conference, a few minutes to get not much across. So like, yeah, narrow focus on what the key points probably are. I think it'd be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, for now, why don't we go ahead and, uh, and start looking at some of those things. Just, uh, I know Alden and I have both been to UN conferences. It sounds like everyone has a little bit of conference experience to their own right. Um, what this is most likely going to look like and the format that is being presented and discussed right now, there will be in the main hall, basically, one of the, you know, one of the several grand kind of conference areas will be the primary discussion, mostly amongst nations, for a call to action. Uh, that's kind of the main outcome that will be become of this conference will be a call to action of for the world's nations to clean up their act around the oceans. And we get to have potential input on that. That's going to be one element that's going to be going on. Another is going to be the partnership discussions. There will be seven of these, and this was actually substantially debated during the preparatory meeting, is what the topics of those seven should be. They revolve primarily around the 10 SDG 14 themes, and kind of relate to one another in some sort of way. Uh, but those individual meetings will be taking place on the side in between sessions of the, the kind of grand conference designing that call to action. So those are official UN meetings, the call to action meetings in the grand hall, and then these partnership meetings that will be going on. And then there will also be the side events. Uh, that are designed and put on by individual organizations, branches of the UN, et cetera, et cetera, that are designed for more specific conversations. So it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be pretty cool. There's also going to be events out on the UN lawn. There's going to be a village. I'm going to see if I can't go row in their regatta because that sounds fun. There's going to be all sorts of stuff going on. There's going to be a, a festival the day before in lower Manhattan. It's going to be quite the week. But the big thing that we want to be sure that we are strategically looking at is how are we presenting ourselves in that big call to action discussion, how, which 
partnership discussions are we entering into or who is attending those and how are we representing ourselves and which of the side events are we looking at. So those are kind of the three layers of things that we really need to be looking at strategically. Any do, you know if there's a post, do you know if there's a poster session or something along the lines where um, so at most conferences, there are the regular talks that go on, but then there's always kind of a side section where people stand in front of their posters and wander around, have drinks and snacks, and then can ask people that are standing in front of their research posters, um, you know, what's going on here? What's this picture about? What does this graph mean? But it's a really informal type situation. Do you know if there's something like that, like a poster session at the UN conference, where if I get some data where I'm able to analyze it and potentially have some results, that it could just roll up into a tube and then be a poster that can hang on a wall that's easy enough to explain? Do you know if that's an option? Yeah, I, I sure as hell hope it will be because there are two different things that immediately come to mind there. One, there's going to be this, they're calling it the ocean village that they're going to be setting up on the main lawn that's going to be representatives of different interest groups. Most of it's going to be food, some of it's going to be displays, etc., etc. John, I'm looking at you with that outrigger. Um, there, I don't know if there's actual opportunity for involvement there. I think that's pretty predetermined and done mostly within the UN. We'd have a very narrow opportunity for getting involved there, seeing as we don't yet have that ECOSOC consultative status. The other thing is, though, that the bulk of this conference, the discussion around it, has been very, very heavily science-based. So I would not be surprised. One of the partnership discussions that is, I believe, going to happen, and we won't actually know that for a little while yet. Um, we won't actually know what the final sessions are going to be, but one of the proposals, I'm just looking at this, this is all in the background note. There's a link to it in the um, minutes or uh, agenda that was on, that's on the Google Doc. Um, the proposed partner ship discussion themes are addressing marine pollution, managing, protecting, conserving, and restoring marine and coastal ecosystems, minimizing, addressing ocean acidification, da, 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 da. the sixth theme, and there's going to be an explicit, like basically day-long partnership discussion around this, is increasing scientific knowledge and developing research capacity and transfer of marine technology. So there is going to be explicit discussion around that. I would not be surprised if there ended up being a broader forum designed for the display and sharing of scientific knowledge at the conference. However, I would also not be surprised if there was not. Um, since this is or tends to be mostly on the political end of things, yeah, you'll have some scientific presentations, um, but those will mostly be premeditated at the podium, ready to go, which is another total opportunity for presenting. Um, we will keep an eye out for that, though, uh, and let you let you all know as as we know that I'm I'm taking notes here actually on the side. So, um, I'm keeping and if it if it helps in your if it helps in your brain, you've mentioned it twice. I also have monitoring protocols that they use on Majuro for their long-term ecological research of garbage in the near shore environment. So they do dives and beach cleanup, and I've got all their data sheets so that we can start using those exact same data sheets on other atolls so that we can have comparative data for what's already being done by College of the Marshall Islands um, and the Marine Resource Authority and all the other folks that are there doing stuff. There's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna really want to talk to you about all of that. I don't know quite yet about the formal element of it, Unfortunately, it's not going to be until after March 31st that any of this is going to get locked down. That is when the uh, notes are due around the partnership discussions. That's when we're going to find out the format of that meeting. That's when the registration for side events is done. So we're not going to really know the opportunities that are available to us until after the end of March, I'm afraid. Uh, but we will definitely be having discussions until then and after that in preparation for this. So we can definitely make sure uh, to design things appropriately around that. Awesome. Um, Ask me questions uh, in the future as needed. Thanks. You got it. All right. Also, awesome stuff you're doing. I'm really excited to hear more about it. Um, just keeping on moving on here. Uh, we, as I mentioned before, we have this EchoSoc registration that we are working on currently. That doesn't necessarily involve any of you except for Kian and Jesper. Uh, we're hoping that that will go through because it'll make it 
uh, really easy for us all to get grounds passes uh, to do this. There are other ways to participate in the conference if we don't get that, but it helps a lot if we can say that we're uh, an ECHOSOC member. It also means that our badges are fancier. Huzzah. Um, side event registration. This is, again, another discussion um, kind of to the forum. Uh, we do potentially, as ECHOSOC members, if we get a registration in time, could potentially register a side event that we could lead. I would say that we would be a bit novice to try to do that. It. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn other fo from other folks and meet other folks. Um, I would say at this point, let's go and participate. But it's great to know that as this conference will be happening every three years, uh, we could, three years down the line, potentially host it. Uh, and this is the other That's also something I've done before. If you need some uh, expertise on that, I've uh, led side events at conferences, so I've got, I might have some input. Brilliant. Um, this is the other thing that we do just need to really confirm today, <laughs> admittedly, is who is intending to come um, for the June conference uh, for the June or for whatever time you are able. Um, I don't know if you all have or had in mind to confirm that tonight, or if there is still some need for discussion and mulling it over in your mind, but we are really hoping to have each of you there, I believe, and are wanting to have a good, solid team set up. So if we can count on you and know that that's something that you're going to be uh, committing to at this point, that would be fantastic. Um, obviously, we'll be having discussions as time goes on. Uh, so what is this for, Jake? I mean, what are you asking for the, uh, um, for the meeting? Is this I, I, I am opening up. Who's who, going? Who, who, is, who is actually planning at this point on being there for the 4th through the ninth conference, if not before and after? I'm going. Yeah, yes, sir. I know you're going. You don't have a choice. <laughs> I, um, I look at uh, the project that I have for, this is Alden, uh, the project I have for Living Islands and uh, just being around the community and uh, and, and, and all the information available I, would be really beneficial to the, the work I will be doing down there. So I'd, I'd love the opportunity to go. Uh, it's taken off work as a, a whole other animal. i got to look into the, whether I can do that or not. Okay. Um, I, will, I will be in touch then one-on-one -on -one with you just to make, make arrangements for that and just follow up one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Does that sound okay, Alden? Yeah, I gotta check the surf forecast for um, you know New York at that point too, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Gotta go hit that. some of those. Gotta go hit some of those uh, the, those high you know Brooklyn waves out there. Hey, you know there's yeah, a Brooklyn wave out there. Really it's not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. Um, I, I love the opportunity if if I can do it with work. Excellent, Alden. I'll follow up with you. Can I just really quickly, um, I'm sorry, the doorbell rang. So could you just, again, say when this is? Um, are you talking about the, the conference from June 5th to the 9th? Yes. So the full range of things, there will be what's going to be the Ocean Festival on the 4th of June. That will take all day on the 4th. That's that Sunday. And then the conference runs from the 5th through the 9th. Um, to my knowledge, there's nothing particularly planned for afterward, but um, as possible, anyone that's available to represent Living Islands um, for the 4th through the 9th. I know that James, um, James said he would too. He had to leave the conference call. Um, he has another meeting he's leading. So um, James, with his Ph.D. research on um, – I, I, I'm not sure if he was able to talk to you about it, but I know that this is going to affect some of his research as well. Okay. I will be in touch with him individually. And I think what we're talking about is going as a group from Saturday to Saturday, right? So the first event happens uh, on Monday the 4th, and the conference yeah. runs Tuesday yeah. to from the 5th to the 9th. So the ideal yeah. thing would be to find – Either you know, move right at the hotel, or we find the funding, which we're hoping we can do, or whatever we'll do, to go all of us from from Saturday to Saturday. If not, we'll just all crash at Jake's apartment. If you bring an air mattress or two, we have the room. And I was actually going to suggest <laughs> that, but that's later down the road. Um, 
okay, so I have Alden will we'll be in touch, James, I will be in touch, Kian and Jesper, you don't have a choice. Um, that leaves uh, our other two here. And so then for me, for Andy, um, at this point I cannot commit to the time in terms of like work scheduling, all that kind of stuff, uh, especially with the trip to the Marshalls launching off here next week. Um, however, I will be able to make whatever data I am able to collect in some type of a presentable form um, for somebody that may be able to then take that and use it for On Living Island's behalf if I am not able to go. Um, if I could go, great, but right now with scheduling, I, there's no way I can commit because I just don't know. Um, but I can say that I will have all of my um, data and that kind of stuff from this trip in some form of a presentable poster graph, quick few awesome. flip pages, something like that uh, for awesome. whoever goes. Awesome, awesome. Excellent. Brian, I want to yeah. see if you can go with us. <laughs> um, well, I didn't know about this till last night, so I don't know. Okay. Hey, make a decision. Um, this is very early. This is very very early on, obviously, to be asking folks if they're able to commit. As per this discussion, everyone is a little uncertain. We will be having more conversations like this. Um, I think the main question at this point is, Brian, Andy, Alden, would you all like to continue participating in our ongoing discussion around Living Island's participation in this conference? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely, right. yeah. That's the most important thing right now. So we will continue keeping everyone in the loop and, and moving forward with this. Um, I'll yeah. keep those three action plans in my brain. This I have them written here, one, two, and three, support uh, just the nation and the communities uh, to utilize ocean resources and maintain them. Number two, need for science and connection between science and society. Uh, and three, um, related to ocean and climate change, are kind of your three key pieces. I'll keep those in the forefront of my brain as I go through over the next month as well to try to make things as streamlined as possible. Love it. I will also post the link to the formal statement that is now on the UN website, so you can actually see the statement as it, as it came out in the end. Um, Perfect. Just a, a couple final things here. Um, Another thing to check out and be looking at, something that we are going to be crafting and we would love any input that you all have. Um, we have the opportunity to submit a voluntary commitment to the Global Voluntary Commitment Registry that is put was launched during the preparatory meeting. Uh, now, the, the registry is obviously designed to include everything from like the government of Australia giving, you know, $500,000 to the school in Sweden that is going to do trash cleanups on the beach once a month. So we have the opportunity to register some sort of forward-looking programmatic effort um, of Living Islands, basically as a little bit of a PR piece for us, admittedly, but to have it included in that discussion of like, look at what the world is doing to mobilize around the oceans. Great opportunity, would love your feedback on that. So if you have any particular thoughts that's going to be something that um, I'm going to be taking point on crafting kind of our statement uh, around what we are going to be doing with, you know, everyone's input and all that um, so that we have that up on the, on the website before the conference just for everyone to be like, so what are you all about? And we can be like, well, here, look at our commitment. Aren't we wonderful? Um, when are you hoping to have that posted? Like just time frame if you know it roughly. Time frame, my hope is to have it before the end of May, but I mean, that's right before the conference, but like any time in the next few months, we don't obviously have anything that's pressing need, uh, but prior to the conference as best as possible. Perfect, thank so you. So I, I have a few um, suggestions on that, and I, I actually have a few questions I wanted to add into this was, um, <laughs> what, about bringing awareness through media as far as Crossroads 2020, Brian's big project, um, and having uh, awareness brought to the nuclear perspective of, of um, Marshall Island. So what, a, what about a documentary? And then um, kind of including our other projects, um, having kids involved 
with ocean cleanup and all that good stuff. So I'm not sure if I sent you Brian's, um, actually Living Islands is working with Mr. Cowden on, on this documentary, but I, I think I sent you that proposal. I'm not really sure, but um, what do you think? If you think? Along again, that would be awesome, but okay. continue. So uh, something, I don't know, along the lines of a documentary, as as much as um, work around getting the youth involved in cleanup, um, just education, just like um, the Take Pride, Learn to Ride program, which we're renaming, um, Alden's um, camp as well. All right. Awesome. Um, as far you're you're discussing in in terms of these being the voluntary commitment opportunity or. Yes, if there, I mean, I don't know if we could um, take um, the documentary. Yes, for what do you think about Crossroads 2020 being part of it, just as an awareness effort? Um, we're gonna figure. I, I would like to integrate it. We're gonna figure out which of the goals that it actually matches, so it becomes a natural match because it's an interesting project. I just want to make sure we sell it right. Uh, but it's a big project, and it, 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 uh, there's a lot of things that's of interest. One of the things that we talked about to Brian a lot is uh, in a Wasak dome that's going to leak into the water. That's obviously something that that not might just, that might not just be us, but be something that is general concern for other people at the conference as well. So I think there's definitely something that that's worth bringing up there. Um, you can hear I'm babbling a lot because I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. So just just for the reference uh, of this discussion, uh, which I think sh should definitely be continued uh, offline at a later point as well, is in terms of registering these voluntary commitments, which is almost entirely a publicity stunt from our, our end, uh, but a very valuable one as far as the UN is concerned. They're really wanting folks to get involved in this way. Um, it's asking for very specific, very measurable things that involve a list like partner organizations and entities, specific beneficiaries, specific deliverables, um, resource tracking and whatnot. So it, it is a fairly detailed process. So something along the lines of like the uh, Box of Bikes program or an individual set of research programs uh, may be more tailored to this um, than I don't know. I, I, it's it's open to the discussion, but I would be very interested in seeing folks' ideas around how we might present one, if not several, of our programs as voluntary commitments to the registry. So that's just something to be keeping in mind. I think this is also definitely going to be one that after uh, folks come back from the islands this round is definitely going to be a much easier thing to start having a really tangible conversation around. So I think that's going to be something to follow up on uh, on our next conversation. I mean, it's something that, that yeah, as you said, it's something that we'll be, we'll be more aware of. Where after, after they go to the island, we might have a clear idea also, even with Crossroads 2020, uh, how big a concern it is for the Marseillese, everything that's going on, if it's a primarily a concern to above water, or if there's a you know, true deep concern for what's happening to the ocean. And we obviously all have our, our ideas, but it's going to be different when they're on the ground talking to people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that'll, be, that'll be something that we'll, we'll be able to, uh, to keep talking about here in the future. Um, the, last, the last thing that we're going to probably have uh, a fair bit more discussion around in the, in the coming weeks and months here is the finalization of the website. Thank you, Jesper, for all your good work on that. Um, I know I've been talking with you guys a lot. Um, I don't want to open the floodgates, but I think folks giving feedback on, on the website and whatnot is probably great at this point. We want to have a very good web presence uh, going into the conference that we can direct folks to. So that will just be something that will be moving forward here in the coming weeks. Yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, in preparation for the conference and the continuation of these conversations, uh, I would encourage everyone to take a look at the links that are at the bottom of the page there. I'm going to add a few more before uh, the end of the night here, including uh, the comments that we had submitted uh, to the forum. 
Uh, take a look, obviously, at the Oceans Conference website, its purpose, the voluntary commitments page. The background note is definitely a good one. Uh, it's fairly detailed. Take a good read. Agenda 2030 is a great thing to be familiar with. It outlines the details of all of the SDGs, um, the Open a Ocean Action Hub. Um, and if you have other links or things that you think should probably be included, feel free to post those here uh, so that we're all on the same page as these discussions go forward. The, um, just before I open it up for questions and last comments here, uh, I would love it if we could plan the next time that we'd be able to all sit down and continue this conversation. Um, so I know folks are going to be in the islands uh, for about a month. I'm actually not entirely sure what your specific schedule is. Uh, when do you all get back, Yana? Uh, 24th, March 24th. March 24th. Uh, well, well, but it might be later well, for other folks. Yeah, we all have different times right. um, and different dates. So. Okay. When are you all going to be back by? I think um, I leave on April. I leave on April the third and come home and back in LA on the tenth of April, I think. Okay. So if we can do any time after April the tenth, if Kiana for some reason is still in the islands at that point, they do have internet. Yes. Although yes. Importantly, difficulties do prevail, Jesper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, what I mean is that what I mean is that they have a period, kind of have a blackout period after they spend time in Maduro uh, towards the middle and end of March, where they've been in a water longer lap, and which is going to make it considerably harder to be in a fall. But right. once you get into April, we should all be okay again. So I'm thinking after April 10, when Brian is back in LA, he would probably be a good target. Okay. I think it would be great to plan something for um, the week after, Brian, after you come back and have had some time to be back for a while would probably be best. Um, we can shoot for I think I, I, I personally think that we can do it right away because I think that, okay. you know, what, what's, what's happening, what Kian and I are doing, one of the main things that we're doing is, is once we get permission, then we, then we can pursue it as a real deal. Uh, you know, we met with the ambassador back in October, now this is going to be the you know because it it has no legitimacy until they say we want to we want to do this and right. you know we're pretty confident it'll happen but you can't say it but once we we have that once we get back I think we'll be I think we'll just be roaring I hope uh, so I think we could do it anytime. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean I would love to set up something for the eleventh. I realize that is really quick. Why don't we uh, Why don't we just be thinking about the, that early April timeline there, or I guess mid April sure. timeline there, and then uh, we can send out uh, an email notification to confirm something uh, somewhere later this week or next. Actually, Jay, why don't we? Could we tentatively, even though because our our schedule is actually really flexible, and it's okay. something that you know when you're back in Marshalls. Um, why don't we tentatively schedule that? Did you want that the 11th of March? Is that March? Of April, you mean? No, did you? Okay, I didn't know if you wanted one more meeting in March because if you wanted one, and, um, we have a meeting with the president on the the second, and the chieftains I think on the third, hopefully. Um, so. It would be great to meet in March. Um, on like the the week of the nineteenth would work for me. I am okay. unfortunately not as flexible. But so, um, why don't we why don't we go ahead and schedule something off offline here, just on email, and then we can we can pinpoint a time and have make sure everyone's aware if they're able to join on, uh, and then plan as a bigger group to definitely uh, find a time for everyone to get together uh, mid April at the latest. That sounds good. And then what I'll do is let you know as well of our schedule that if we can make the March one, okay? Okay, sounds great. Does that does that plan work for everyone else as well? Yes. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Um, that is everything that we have for right now. Does anyone have any particular questions or anything, any concerns that they would like to address right now? Um. This is Alden. Just with work, I um, 
I may have trouble getting the entire week off. And fr- what I'm hearing from Hesper is that we definitely want to try to have everyone there from Saturday to Saturday presenting this unified presence with all of our team, you know, having us all done our prep work to be there and, and essentially accessible with the same stuff to say about Living Islands, say for our individual projects. Um, yeah. Would it be a problem if I was only to attend, able to attend like three days and would it, even be beneficial if I, I couldn't make the whole week? Personal opinion, I think it would still be wonderfully effective. Um, better yet, if you're able to attend early on. I think the, the conferences tend to be uh, top-heavy, from my understanding, having talked with folks. I don't know your experience with UNFCCC, uh, but it does seem like a lot of the influence comes very early on. Um, and obviously the opportunity for folks to, to speak and everything like that, they tend to be much dense, more dense at the front. Speak up if you have anything to the contrary. This is just... Un- I, can sec- I can second that about scientific conferences because by the end people's brains are full and fried and nobody listens. They go and do other activities. So the first part of any conference like that is always kind of the golden period. You make your contacts for later, everything else. Okay. Absolutely. So if you're only able to take limited time, we would definitely encourage you to come out that Saturday, be there for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, maybe, or something like that. Um, sure. if you could, Wednesday, that's even better. All right. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. Cool. And like I said, I'll be in touch with, uh, with each of you in terms of that specifics uh, for scheduling. Oh, thank you. Uh, one-on-one. Yeah. I uh, Jake, I did... I did have one quick question, uh, maybe to direct us to a conversation after this meeting. Um, but because you've spent a lot of time in Majuro, um, have just a lot of experience that I don't have yet, um, one of the things I was wondering is if you might have any contacts for uh, the Marshall Islands Marine Research Authority or the College of the Marshall Islands in terms of like upper level administrators, teachers, people that are doing research, that kind of stuff. Um, that you might be able to connect me with uh, in the probably coming week. So um, kind of the first week of uh, March is what I'm looking at. So if you might have any suggestions as you file through your brain on that stuff, that would be great as well. Yeah. Um, just to let you know, Andy, <coughs> that give me, give me you a, can, can, it, you me a note, but Tiana would probably have those contacts as well, but um, if you want to shoot me a specific note with a reminder, I can go back through some of my emails. There's a guy whose name is escaping me at the moment who I think would be your ideal contact. He's their coral reefs guru. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if you were working with somebody in particular that might that you might be able to recommend as uh, a good on-island contact, just somebody to get my uh, feet in the door kind of thing. It'd be great. Yeah. Oh, ab- absolutely, absolutely. I'll, I'll see what I can I can do that way. Yeah. And just just to let Please. you know that we we've, we've discussed this. I know that um, you said I know you are super busy. Um, that you were going to connect us. Um, so because you were super busy, Jake, I've sort of taken the initiative. We do have some conferences, um, meetings coming up with like MICS and, um, you know, <laughs> you know what's his name? Um, Mark Steggy, along with Dong and Hess, is off island actually. And he is the I director for CMAC yep. or CMCA, whatever that is. But um, he's off island right now due to some issues yeah. that's happened. Um, so we do have a, a lot of other contacts as far as what was the South Pacific as well um, university? Yes, University of South Pacific. And then EPA RMI is willing to have a con- is willing to have a meeting with us within the first week, but she is not back yet. The director is not back. So we'll have it in the agenda going, Andy. It's just that we're still working and trying to get confirmation. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Just uh, maybe if you don't mind if I can just shout out these quick things. Uh, So uh, Pam Rubinoff, Mariah Hawes, Megan Gombos, uh, Jessica Capelli, um, Melvin Silk, Melba White, uh, Dean Jacobs, Don Hess, you just mentioned, um, Peter Hauk, Hook, um, and uh, Steve Lindsay, Robin Ayeo, 
it looks like those are the list of folks that I'm about to email over the next day to see if I can set stuff up. If you know any of those names, it would be a big help. None of those are ringing a bell, surprisingly. I will uh, – those, those are ringing bells because those are family members too. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they wrote the long-term ecological research plans for Majuro. It's uh, the Rinunlok. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but the community-based Ramon. monitoring plan for the Marshall Islands. How do you say it? Ramonlok. Ramonlok. Thank you. I haven't – I've just read it. I haven't heard it said yet. Um, so yeah. some of the authors of that um, – things like that, but great, great, great stuff that we should build off of rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. So if I can talk to some of those people on what they would like to progress their research that's already been done would be a huge help. So that's kind of where my reference frame is for introduction stuff. Absolutely. And we can be in touch uh, offline one-on-one -on -one to, to get that set up. Just shoot me an email anytime. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Uh, we're going to actually, <clears throat> excuse me, try and wrap up here within the, uh, the allotted time. So any, anyone else questions, comments uh, specific to the conference or preparation there for? Nada. Oh, sorry, Alden, did I see? Yeah, I said nada, I think. Nada, all right. Well, with that, thank you, everyone. Um, it's great talking with everyone, and I will be in touch with you in the future to try and schedule uh, some follow-up here, uh, address any concerns. You're always welcome to email me. It's jacob at livingislands.org, um, or, you know, you can always go through Kiana and Jesper, um, and we'll be, we'll be in touch. Thanks so much for, uh, for chatting tonight, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Jake. Thank you so much, Jake.